ഓം ശ്രീ കൃഷ്ണായ പരമാത്മനേ നമക ശ്രീ മഹാഭാരത ചാപ്റ്റർ തേർട്ടി ഫോർ യവക്രീദാസ് എൻഡ് യവക്രീദ സ്റ്റഡീഡ് ദി വേദാസ് ആൻഡ് ബിക്കേം ലേണഡ് ഹി ഗ്രൂ വെയിൻ വിത്ത് ദി തോട്ട്സ് ദാറ്റ് ഹി ഹാഡ് അക്വയർഡ് ദി നോളജ് ഓഫ് ദി വേദാസ് ത്രൂ ദി ബൂൺ ഓഫ് ഇന്ദ്ര ആൻഡ് നോട്ട് ത്രൂ ഹ്യൂമൻ ചുറ്റുലേജ് Bharadwaja did not like this and feared that his son might ruin himself by slighting Raibhya. He thought it necessary to warn him. The gods, he said, grant boons to foolish people who persistently practice penances as intoxicants or sold to fools for money. They lead to laws of self-control and and this leads to the warping of the mind and utter destruction he illustrated his advice by the incident acts ancient tale which is given below in olden times there was a celebrated sage named baladhi he had a son whose untimely death plunged him into grief so he practiced rigorous penances to get a son who would never meet with death the gods told the sage that this could never be for the human race was necessarily mortal and their need must be a limit to human life they asked him to name his own limit the sage replied in that case grant that the life of my son may persist as long as that mountain loss the boon was granted to him and he was duly blessed with a son named medhavi medhavi grew conceited at the thought that he was safe from death forever since he would live as long as the mountain existed and he behaved with arrogance towards all one day this vain man showed disrespect to a great sage named danushaksha at once that sage cursed that he might be turned to ashes but the curse took no effect on medavi who remained in perfect health seeing this the high souled sage was puzzled and then remembered the gift medavi had been endowed with at birth danushaksha took the form of a wild buffalo and by the power of his penances butted at the mountain and broke it into pieces and medavi fell down dead bharadwaja concluded the story with this solemn warning to his son learn wisdom from this old story be not ruined by vanity cultivate self restraint do not transgress the limits of good conduct and do not be disrespectful to the great raibhya it was spring time the trees and creepers were beautiful with flowers and the whole forest was gorgeous with color and sweet with the song of birds the very earth seemed to be under the spell of the god of love Paravasu's wife was strolling alone in the garden near the hermitage of Raibhya. She appeared more than human in the sweet union in her of beauty, courage and purity. At that time, Yavakrida came there and was so overwhelmed by her loveliness that he completely lost his sense and self-control and became as revenging, revening beast with lust. he accosted her and taking brutal advantage of her fear and shame and bewilderment he dragged her to a lonely pot and violated her person raibhya returned to his hermitage he saw his daughter in law weeping broken hearted and inconsolably and learning of the shameful outrage perpetrated on her he was seized with implacable anger he plucked a hair from his beard and offered it to the fire reciting a mantra at once a maiden 
as beautiful as his daughter in law emerged from the sacrificial fire the sage plucked another hair from his knotted lock and offered it as oblation a terrible ghost rose from the fire the sage commanded them to kill yavakrida both of them bowed to the order while yavakrida was performing the morning rites the female spirit went near him and with smiles and allurements put him off his guard and as she ran away with his water jug the male ghost rushed on him and uplifted spear with uplifted uplifted spear yavakrida stood up in fear knowing that his mantra would be of no avail until he cleansed himself with water he looked for his water jug when he found it missing he rushed to a pond for water but the pond was dry he went to nearby stream which also dried up at his approach there was no water for him anywhere the terrible fiend pursued him everywhere and evakrida fled for his life with the demon hot on his heels his sin had consumed the power of his vigils and pass at last he sought refuge in the sacrificial hall of his father the half blind man was who was guarding the hermitage stopped him as he could not recognize evakrida as distorted with mortal fear he sought to force his way in meanwhile the fiend overtook him and killed him with his spear when bharadwaja returned to his hermitage he came upon his son's corpse and concluded that disrespect to raibhya must have led to his cruel fate alas my child you died of your pride and vanity was it not a great mistake that you tried to learn the vedas in a way not resorted to by any brahmana why did you behave so as to be cursed thus may raibhya who caused the death of my only son be himself killed by one of his sons thus carried away by rage and grief the sage cursed raibhya regaining control soon he exclaimed in anguish alas they alone are blessed who have no sons i have not only lost my only son but in the madness of my grief i have also cursed my friend and companion what is the use of continuing my life he cremated his son's body and died by throwing himself on the funeral pyre this concludes the chapter 34 om namo bhagavate vasudevaya